And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. And his substance also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she asses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them, all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned, and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to the presence to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, What's comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and is sure of evil? We can see here how God asks Satan the question, have you considered my servant Job? And then God, if you will, he begins to boast or he begins to speak about Job's character. He speaks about his character. And then Satan answered the Lord and said, doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse thee to thy face. Now here I want you to pay attention. I'm going to move kind of quickly through this. But now at this particular point if you notice all the things that we've been talking about and mixed signals, they were all attached to things. See, in the flesh, people in the flesh and things of the flesh and Satan and the devil, they can only attach to things of the flesh because this is what this is what draws people. You know, we're living in the day now where you speak so much prosperity. That you know it's all about, you know, you get so many people that God said that, or Jehovah said to them that they're going to go and do revivals and minister, and Jehovah said he's going to give them a Bentley, or Jehovah told them he was going to give them a mansion, or Jehovah uh, told them that, that they were going to get this suit, or, 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 or so on and on and on and on. It's all about things. They, they see the blessings of the Lord based on things. And Satan knows that. This is what Satan's talking about things. He says, if you if you take all this stuff from him, the only reason why he's serving you is because of things. And then in verse 11, what does he say? He says, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went, Forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when the sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sebans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the swords, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. 
While he was yet speaking, there came a, also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and have burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels and carried them away, and yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are, they are dead. And I only am escaped to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell upon the ground and worshipped and said naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away blessed is the name of the Lord in all this Job said not nor charge God foolishly see what I want to talk to you about is God knew when he challenged Satan or when he spoke about Job, he knew that his relationship with Job was not based on things. I wonder how many of us out there can say that. His relationship was not based on things. We see here one thing after another. And there are many of you under the sound of my voice, one thing after another is coming at you. I've been there. I've been there. I can talk about it. I'm not sitting up here making up things. I have been there. One thing after another, after another, after another. And I never once looked at God anyway because the reality of it is this. Everything that I had ever acquired of any value or substance, the Lord gave me. So if the Lord took it away, it was he only took back what he gave me. Even if I would have gave it to him, all I could give him is what he gave me. If I gave God all the, the resources and money, out of, if I emptied out bank accounts, stock options, whatever. Listen, all I did was give him what he gave me. If, if I give him my life, it's only what he gave me. And Job understood that. See, relationship is the most important thing that Yehovah is wanting you to get because if you get a relationship, if your relationship, if you get an intertwined, intimate, unconditional relationship with Yehovah, you won't have to worry about mixed signals, beloved. My brothers and sisters, you won't have to worry about it. I challenge you in this. See, let's just use for an example an anniversary or a birthday. I don't celebrate a lot of the pagan holidays, but if the the your your wedding anniversary is the event, it carries with it all the ambiance. Uh, you know, the your wife she has on the woman you have on a gown. You got your jewelry on. Your hair is done. Uh, your your husband, he's got the tuxedo on or the nice suit. You got the corsage, you got the boutonniere. You're at a fine dining restaurant. Uh, the candle lights, you got roses. You got your little gifts for each other. You, you know, you're eating the surf and turf. Everything is just perfect. Because that's the obvious that comes with the event. But if... You don't have a relationship. If you can't speak to your wife, or your wife can't speak to you, you can't communicate, or you just you just falling out of communication with each other. The event means nothing. See, the anniversary without a relationship means nothing. It's endless. It means nothing. It's empty. It's the same thing as celebrating a birthday and you give all the gifts to someone. And they don't like you, or they don't appreciate it, or they—they're not—they don't—they don't say thank you. 
The event is the birthday with all the albums, but without a relationship with the son or daughter or the husband or wife, it means nothing. It's all about relationships. And this relationship will cause you not to go in air or to go sidetrack because you're speaking one-on-one and you're dealing one-on-one with Jehovah. You can't be tricked or you can't be um, sidetracked by things. You can't, you can't be sidetracked by things because things come and go. And this is what Jehovah is saying to us tonight. He's beckoning you to take your relationship even deeper. Jehovah has need for you, man, woman, young man, young lady. Jehovah desires to have you. It's not about things. It's just a relationship. See, we're going to leave out of here. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will remain forever. Listen, what we do for Jehovah, that's the only thing that will last. And so it's important tonight that we get a hold of that. And you're going to find out. I know what it's like, beloved. See, when you go from one thing to the next to the next thing, if we read further, his wife tells him, why don't you curse God and just die? And he says, thou speakest like a foolish woman. We know his three friends begin to come around and they begin to talk about, you know, you must have done something wrong. You must be in sin with all this stuff that is going on with you. And I'm going to tell you, I know what that's like. There are many of you out there that the Lord brought you off your job. And you may be friends with people. All they know how to do is work. But God called you to do something different. Let me tell you something. No two assignments are the same. Wherever God has you, he's trying to get his divine purpose out of your life. There is a process. He gives you a promise. You go through the process and then you reach your purpose. The purpose of why you went through the process. So you can't can't get caught up in what people are saying. Because people only deal with flesh and flesh to them is based on things. You may be sick out there in your body and the enemy wants to attack you or tell you that you're doing something wrong because you're sick, because you lost your home, because there's somebody out there that may be going through something because you were your, your relationship, you're going through a divorce or a separation. And people want, and you know, I've had pe- people will say to you, well, how are you going to preach and tell me this and minister and tell me that? And your relationship is not going. Or your relationship went the other way. I remember the Lord said to me, remember Lot's wife. <laughs> I can tell you stories. You continue to allow your relationship be t- to be so intertwined with Jehovah that nothing can get in between. Let nothing separate you from what? The love of Jehovah. Don't do it. You'll be separated from the things of the flesh and the people of the flesh. For they so soon all pass away. But only what we do for Jehovah will last forever. A loss in life is not a loss of life. You can make it from anywhere. I speak faith to you under the sound of my voice that are in rough places and it seems like it's a trickling effect. It's one thing after another, after another, after another. I tell you, if you can just grab a hold of yourself and find a worship from your belly and pour out, not asking for anything, but just loving him and worshiping him just because he is Jehovah. He's God and he's holy. And he deserves it. You were made to worship him. You were made to love him. You were made to honor him. You were made to adore him. You were made to lift him. Oh, why don't you fall in the mandate of what you were made for your creation? And somewhere in the midst of why you're doing that, things will just change. Now, for me... I see or experienced the more than enough where he just came and just just did things and but that didn't mean anything to me 
because I've learned not to hold on to anything to wear it loose because things are just things they come and go it doesn't mean anything 